When hinges creak on do in doorless chambers and strange frightening sounds echo through the halls, whenever candlelights flicker where the air is deathly still, that is the time when the ghosts are present and practicing their terrors with ghoulish delight. Welcome, foolish mortals, to the haunted mansion. I am your host, your ghost host. And more like chaotic entity who's going to teach you a bunch of lore. Anyway, how y'all doing? There. Audio's fixed. Is everything fine now? Ugh, I thought my audio was fine. It set it to default and not freaking blue snowball. Who knows? Anyway. So, greetings, foolish mortals. Tis I, cat. Actually, now you all see where my freaking... <laughs> now you all see where my opening came from. Welcome to... Cat will be teaching lore about the haunted mansions. Yes, mansions. Plural. Hope you guys are ready. As everyone remembers, I was supposed to do a subathon goal where I teach Disney park lore. I decided to stick to a haunted mansion. So, anyway. Is everyone excited? So, how many of you guys actually know anything about the haunted mansion? Minus it's a ride at Disney World, Disneyland, uh, Disneyland Paris, as well as Jap uh, Disney, Tokyo Disney, as well as, er, what's the other one? Uh, Mystic Manor. Yes. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. And Punk Mog has only seen the movie. <laughs> okay, uh, Punk Mog, uh, all that information about the movie, just pluck that out of your brain, throw it out, yeet! I am going to be teaching you all the Haunted Mansion. Now, to give you guys a little backstory about little old me, no, I never worked at a Disney park, no matter how many times people think I did work at a Disney park because of all the knowledge I have contained in my brain. No, I'm just autistic with hyperfixation. Uh, <laughs> the Haunted Mansion is one of my personal favorite rides in uh, Disney World. Actually, it is... Number one, uh, fun fact. No, actually, it's tied with my favorite part, ride at Disney altogether. The other one is Journey to the Imagination, the original one with Dreamfinder. It will forever be my favorite. So, anyway, I love the Haunted Mansion. My whole family loves it. My mom and I also love My mom also loves the Haunted Mansion. Ah, ooh, Zephron, I forgot you are French, so you're going to learn some shit about the Phantom Manor as well, because I've also included that in my play, uh, in my cover. So, I love the Haunted Mansion. I, while I do not own a shit ton of merch like a lot of Haunted Mansion fans, because I am uh, not that financially stable, <laughs> especially after having to buy a bunch of new equipment recently, um, I do love the Haunted Mansion. I did actually used to own, when I was younger, a Haunted Mansion book, which was all about the behind the scenes and the making of the Haunted Mansion, Sadly, I could not find it. I lost it. It's somewhere in storage. If I ever find it again, that'll be great. So, I love the Haunted Mansion. I am a Disney. I am an adult Disney fan. No, I am not a Disney adult. I personally think that the term Disney adult is dedicated to people who have a shit ton of money, can buy all their stuff, and can go to the Disney parks every weekend. I cannot do that. I am just a fan who happens to really enjoy Disney. And also, I have a problem with some Disney adults just completely ignoring the problems that Disney has has and is having, still. I acknowledge it and I will critique. And also sometimes the Disney adults are a little scary. They scare me. If I had money, would I though? Own Disney, own actual uh, Disney products, own actual Haunted Mansion merch, yes, I would. But I don't think I would like to go to the parks every week because as a person who is autistic and also is disabled, I, no. Crowds, not a lot of places to sit, how expensive wheelchair rentals is, etc., etc. It's expensive. So anyway, as we were saying, I am a huge Haunted Mansion fan. I know my shit. I am obsessed with the Haunted Mansion. Well, not obsessed. Fun fact, this used to be my background when I first started PNG tubing. But um, I had to change it once I started getting a little bit more popular because of fear of the mouse. <laughs> the mouse scares me. The mouse is evil. So, um, uh, also fun fact, uh, all funny little uh, redeems have been turned off for the stream because I want to be able to hyper-focus and stay on point, and I don't want the redeems to interrupt, so if you notice there is a lack of redeems, yeah, kind of had to do that. So, let's, let's start with the basics. Uh, the Haunted Mansion, the original OG Haunted Mansion in California. <laughs> Ah, those alerts still go off, though. Thank you, Zephyrinoff, for becoming a... Becoming a... You have been subscribed to me for a year. <whistles> Whole year subscribed to little old me. 
Time does fly. Anyway, so, <coughs> sorry. So the Haunted Mansion, right, I love dearly. Um, we'll start from the beginning, the very beginning, back in the 70s, 80s, 60s, 50s, around there, 50s, 60s. So, the Haunted Mansion itself, originally, fun fact, was planned to be a, uh, Walt Disney wanted to make a fun little attraction in, if I remember correctly, New Orleans Square in California. By the way, I do have notes. Am I going to look at them often? Who knows? But I am remembering most of the stuff, and I also did, like, a last night cram session, so let's hope that I kept something in there. <coughs> so the Haunted Mansion was being designed, and they went, and uh, Disney wanted to do something, uh, They Disney wanted to put something in New Orleans Square, which was kind of empty at the time. And he came up with an idea of doing a uh, haunted... Um, theme park, uh, uh, like a semi-haunted house. A museum of the weird is what he originally planned, he and the Imagineers. They weren't called Imagineers, they were called WED back then, but we're going to use you through the term Imagineer because that's the term that everyone knows colloquially, modernly. Um, they were going to do a museum of the weird, which was going to be kind of like a museum with funny thing, with, with creepy things in it. Uh, with cute creep, with cute little creepy things. Nothing too sinister, still fun and safe for the kids. And, you know, there was going to be a tour guide, and, well, there's a small problem with that, and Disney notices it. So this is a thing that a lot of people who work at parks have to put into consideration, which is called, which is usually called flow. It's called flow, input, output, etc. Basically, they want to get as many people through the ride as possible. But the problem is, if you do a standard walkthrough at your own pace attraction, you won't get as many people going through because, you know, you have to consider capacity and all that jazz. I mean, you still have to compare about, care about capacity when doing a normal ride ride, but that's a thing you have to deal with. When, so they decided to go from the museum, the walking through museum to a ride, but back then there weren't really that many options for, uh, for uh, ride carts. And they only had what I think is known back then as the pretzel cart there i think i might be wrong but it basically was on a track but disney wanted it to be mr walt disney himself wanted it to basically so people would look at the things he wanted and he really wanted people to you know focus on certain aspects ignore other things and you know focus on the important stuff and they were trying to figure out something and here's a little fun bit of tidbit that i actually remember from uh the book uh, one of the uh, one of the creators whose name I can't remember. This is the problem. I can't remember names, but I can tell you the stories. One of the uh, engineers basically grabbed an apple, held an apple, held it by its stem, and made it spin. And basically, that is how the made it spin and turn on it turn however he wanted. Basically, that is how the invention of yeah, don't look at the green. Uh, it's actually see away green or go away green. It actually doesn't even have an official term, but it's a term that a lot of Disney folks, use, uh, people who uh, go to Disney work. So um, he basically, uh, the Haunted Mansion was the ride that helped invent the Omni Mover, which is a term of ride. You all might be aware of it. It's basically you're on a track and you're in a seat and you're basically being turned to look at the things you need to see. It's a cute thing. Omni Mover. You can thank the Haunted Mansion for that one. And so they basically worked on the Haunted Mansion that we know today in California. Now, the lore of that actual park itself, it has lore and it doesn't have lore. There's not a story. Basically, the Haunted Mansion, both in California and in Florida, the American ones, their Haunted Mansions are basically, it is a place where ghosts go to either retire or live out their eternal rest basically this is the place where all the ghosts get to hang out and it's home to 999 happy haunts but there's always room for a thousand any volunteers uh, fun fact there actually is a 1000th ghost uh disney decided to do a uh, uh on ebay a uh, charity auction to be the so you could have your name and be the 1000th ghost of the haunted mansion which was won by a doctor whose name was grab my notes Notes, 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 notes. I know it's in here. I put it in here. I put that note in here because I thought it was cute. I don't have the note. Here's what I can tell you for the fun note. I can't remember the winner, but I can tell you the first bidder was Clive Barker. 
Hi, Candy. How are you? How you doing? Welcome to my haunt. Welcome to the haunted mansion, Lord Stream. Uh, I can tell you that the first bidder was actually Clive Barker. Um, uh, about the remains, Candy. I'm gonna have to ruin it for you. So people do dump their dump their loved ones' ashes at the ride, and guess what happens to those ashes? They get picked up by Mr. Hoover. They get picked up by Mr. Hoover and just vacuumed away. Now you might be asking, why don't they just keep it there? Because ashes apparently can fuck up the track system. Because basically people just dump it in the track system. <laughs> so they have to clean it up. So please, if you wanna, if your loved one loves the haunted mansion, don't dump their ashes in the, in the haunted mansion. They're, they're not gonna like, they're, they're gonna just get swept up, put in a Hoover and put it into a vacuum sack. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Put them in a Madame Leota crystal ball thingy. I don't know. <laughs> but cremades never leave. They're like glitter. True. So the Haunted Mansion, like I said, it was basically a place where the ghosts got to hang out. 999 ghosts, always room for a thousand, any volunteers. Um, and it's basically, there's not really lore, lore. There's lore, but there's not lore in my personal opinion. There's lore, but there's not a story. That's, that's what we're looking for. That too, Candy. Ah, Candy also knows something. Um, so uh, the problem is, Ugh, sorry, I'm trying to think of my words. So there is stories, but there's not story of the ride. Like, there are stories of the ghost and you get to interpret it in the environment. But there's not, like, a consistent story. Like, the Winnie the Pooh ride. Of all the rides at Disney, Cat, Winnie the Pooh. Okay. Or the, the or, uh, Snow White's Adventures. That one, that one has a convenient story. It's the fucking movie. Um, so there are a lot of different ghosts at the Haunted Mansion, both of them. I'm going to cover both Haunted Mansions because basically they have no story and it's just, they have a bunch of similar ghosts so we're going to just share them anyway. Um, so there's a lot of different ghosts at the Haunted Mansion. A lot of them are fun, or like funny little one-off jokes. There's an another one which involves the, a mummy and a death philosopher, which is a very old joke even for when this ride was made. <laughs> so, if anyone was going to get it, eh. Uh, the movie Haunted Man. Oh, that reminds me. Uh, Haunted Mansion lore will not be. We're covering the Haunted Mansion lore of the rides. The movie is not going to be counted because it's technically not canon, and also and has never been incorporated into the ride, so therefore not canon. Unlike the Pirates of the Caribbean ride with Johnny Depp everywhere. Also, um, fun fact: the Haunted Mansion actually has a series of books, as well as I think a radio series, as well as comic books. They have lore. I'm not adding it because it's not part of the ride. And like I said, this is all about the ride, not about we're sticking to the rides. We're sticking to the rides. Because if I try to include the movie, if I try to include the books in the movies, we're going to be here all day. The story is undead at this moment. Yeah, yeah. So let's let's try to keep focused on the rides, people. I will talk about some pre prevalent ghosts in the Haunted Mansion. One of them including the Haunted Mansion. See, Candy, you say that as a joke. <laughs> More on that later, okay, Candy? <laughs> more on that later. So we'll talk about some of the more prevalent characters of the Haunted Mansion. Uh, the two rides, at least. Actually, technically, I should be saying the Florida ride, the California ride, as well as the Tokyo Disney ride. Uh, fun fact, Tokyo Disney is basically a carbon copy of the Florida ride. The joke used to be they just used the spare parts of the Florida ride to put in the Tokyo one. I don't know if that's true or not. I am not a worker there. <sighs> So, when it comes to the Haunted Mansion, again, the prevalent ghost. I should really have gotten some visual aids. I forgot to grab my visual aids. I was going to grab some visual aids, and then I noticed how some of them were kind of horrific, and I don't want to push it with Twitch right now. Uh, we'll start with one of the more popular ones. Uh, oh, yeah, thank you, Leo, by the way, for the candy. It's pretty good. It's sugar-coated sugar of sugariness, which I'm going to need to take a couple of these so I can keep my energy up. Um... So, we'll start with the, the most well-known, uh, the ghost host. He is the one who basically guides you around on the ride. He's the one who's the narrator. Uh, fun fact, uh, before the Haunted Mansion became the Haunted Mansion that we know and love today, um, one of the abandoned stories was known as Captain Gore, which was basically, um, <clears throat> it was the story of a sea captain who basically was actually a bloodthirsty pirate who killed his wife. Yeah, it's kind of dark. 
who killed his wife and she as haunting it and also he died and he was originally going to be the ghost host they changed that fun fact there is a reference to captain gore in the original haunted mansion in california with a sail with a sail ship with a sailing ship as the weather vane that's the only reference to captain gore you're going to get um as for captain gore sorry captain gore scary and there was also the story of the Blood Mare Manor, which I didn't really find a lot of stuff on it. I did not have enough time to go on doombuggies.com. Yes, that is the go-to place for Haunted Mansion nerds. Um, but again, we're sticking to the main Haunted Mansion. That is quote-unquote canon. So the ghost host himself is basically the man who guides you around. Uh, his story is actually kind of interesting. So if you've ever been on the stretching portraits, uh, there's a hallway, which basically is a loading dock. Which has stretching portraits. Originally, that was meant in the original right is actually an elevator to take you down. Um, it is also, I think, an elevator to take you up in this one. And it's a it's an elevator that takes you down in California and I think up in Florida. I think it's weird. It's very interesting. I love the stretching portraits. My personal favorite one is the ballerina over the alligator pit. That's my personal favorite. I've always loved that one. Um, I wish I had that one. I'd love to have that in my room. Um, so. Uh, the ghost host is the one who basically tells you to look alive ha, 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 and guide you off. And basically, he's the one who goes and you can tell there are no windows and no doors. You must find a way out. I'm paraphrasing, of course. We don't want Disney to get on my ass. We're doing it perfectly. Um, and he always goes, well, it's always my way. There's a bright flash of lightning. Now, if you've ever actually looked up, which if you're epileptic, don't do, uh, you can actually see a hanged man. Yes, that is in the original ride. And it's still there to this day. The ghost host basically was a man who worked at the haunted mansion and <coughs> himself, and also might have and also might have been an axe murderer. People still question that one to this day. Um, uh oh, I'm being getting a message from Idol. Thank you, Idol. So that's a yeah. Disney gets done. Zephron, you were you go to fan? Have you been on Phantom Manor? Phantom Manor's lore is even more fucking dark. Trust me on this. I did my research recently. Anyway. So that's the ghost host. And you claim yourself family friendly. Oh, uh, oh, uh, Leo, my redeems have been turned off for the sake of this stream right now because I'm trying to do, uh, talkie and I want to focus. I forgot to turn off pets. Sorry. If any of my mods are in, can you please refund him? Uh, so as I was saying, Oh, never mind. Uh, so, another prevalent ghost. Thank you, Can Candy, you're not a freaking mod on my stream. <laughs> I never made you a mod. Now, some other ghosts that I personally enjoy. Thankfully, I can show this one. Hopefully. Forgot to grab the picture. Now, there is a character... So, in the ride, I'm trying to pick ones that I personally like. There's another ghost on the ride, which is in the attic scene, which I love the attic scene. Which has what is what used to be known as the Beating Heart Bride, which was just a bride, shadowy face, kind of like this. <laughs> and had, a red, um, had some red lights doing a beating heart motion, which was really interesting. They grew her character out to make her into what is now known as Constance Hatchaway. Hold on, we might have picture. Uh, browser. Nah. Uh, hold on. We might have picture. Why did that not copy? Hold on. Give me a second. We are professional here. Hopefully this works. I have no clue. Ta-da! It worked. Kind of. Sort of. Good enough. Um, this is Constance Hatchaway. This is a horrible image of Constant Hatchaway. <laughs> uh, Constant Hatchaway was implemented, I think, in the 2010s. <laughs> Candy, I'll make you a mod in a second. Uh, <laughs> I think she was the 2010s, I think. So, in the attic scene, there was originally a bride who basically had a beating, a uh, bl black shadowy face. No one could see her face. She was sad. And she had a beating heart. If it's a reference to Edgar Allan Poe, no fucking clue. Uh, no effing clue. Uh, 
the Beating Heart Bride was just basically a really cool spooky thing. And there was, like, implications about her lore, but never, ever confirmed. Until she was modified in the... I can't believe I have to check my notes again. 2006. Oh, yeah, she was introduced in 2006. Sorry, me bad. I thought it was 2010. Guess that's when I first saw her. Tells you how often I go to Disney. Um, Constant Hatchaway, which they'd used a form of animatronic that I am personally the not a fan of. Where it's basically... It's basically a mannequin blank face and they use holographic projection onto the face. Um, it's very commonly used on... It was used on Ursula in the Little Mermaid ride. It's also used in the... It's also used on the replacement of the original Norway ride, which was Frozen. Yes, I'm still bitter about that. Uh, because this isn't the Beating Heart Bride, because getting images of the actual original Beating Heart Bride is really, really hard. Because that... Because, uh, one, cameras were not that great as they are now. Especially on cell phones. And they always had a very strict no-flash photography rule. They still have that strict no-flash photography rule, but luckily cameras nowadays have night mode. So, you know. That's a good thing. So this is Constance Hashaway. Again, uses the holographic projection on the face. I personally hate it because it gives you so much. It's okay, Zephron. We're fine. We don't need those. Don't need those. She has no lore. She does. Now, Constance Hatchaway is a Black Widow Bride. Now, how many of you guys know what a Black Widow Bride is? Raise your hand. Excuse me while I grab my notes. So, the Black Widow Bride, she's a Black Widow. Meaning, she married five men. <laughs> I had to confirm this because I couldn't remember the number. She married five men very wealthy, profitable men, I'd like to point out, and murdered them. And she gained their riches and fat money. If she actually owns the Haunted Mansion itself, no one knows. People always argue about that Constance is actually the original owner of the house. But then people also argue that Master Gracie is the original home of the house. Um, Master Gracie is a character I will cover later. I really love Constance Hatchaway, to be honest, because she's a woman who basically knows what she wants. Uh, no, um... She's a very interesting character lore-wise because she basically was not well off and she decided to become well off by marrying rich men and offing them and gaining the inheritance. I mean, I respect the hustle, girl. It's a very hard economy these days. <laughs> kidding, kidding. And I also love her line delivery. And one of my personal favorite lines is, in sickness and in health, till death do us part. Now, the thing is, there's a lovely little illusion with her where she's holding a candle until she says, till death do us part, and she's holding a, a hatchet. She's chopped the heads of her husbands and kept their heads in hat boxes, which are in there. Now, if you're on the California ride, people think that the hat box ghost, I'll talk about the hat box ghost later, was a part of it and was a part of her, was a part of the, her whole murder scheme and maybe in her actual lover. There has never been confirmation. It is just head cannon right now, which is kind of effed up. Um, so that's a thing we have to do, I think, uh... The Hatbox Ghost, for those who want to know, is a ghost that was on... Uh, so, Constance, I like. I like Constance. Um, she's a very interesting character, in my personal opinion. I'm just... I'm trying to do, like, a really nice summary and not go into hyper details like certain people did when I had my Warhammer lessons. Um, <clears throat> so, she also might be a reference to... Uh, to the original plan for, uh, she might have also been a reference to the original plan of the Captain Gore, uh, the Captain Gore story, which was, you know, husband killed her wife, killed his wife because he thought, you know, now that she knows I'm a bloodthirsty pirate, she will never love me or will snitch or something like that. Okay, now we're going to go into the domain of not mine because I've never been to the California ride. I've never been to the California ride. Thank God. Well, not thank God. It's hella hot in California. Um, so this is the one that is in the ha California ride, not in the Florida ride. So I know li literally nothing about this character. Um, this is the Hatbox Ghost. He was actually in the original version of Haunted Mansion in 1969. Was there for like, I have heard ranging from two weeks to two days to two months. And then was removed. Because his whole trick, the Hatbox Ghost's trick is, see his head? It's supposed to disappear and go into the hat. It is a wonderful, very advanced piece of tech they did back then, and 
basically he was gone forever. People only knew rumors of this thing. And then there was confirmation at a Disney Expo, uh, Disney D23, which is an expo. And people were like, oh, the Hatbox Ghost is real. And they decided to bring him back. Sometimes he works, sometimes he doesn't. And then they did a refix of him recently. They showed a new version of him uh, at the most recent D23. I wish I was there. Um, And they showed the new version of the Hatbox Ghost. The trick is supposed to even be better now. And it's a really cool effect. I really would love to see it. But there's no real room in the... His whole purpose is to be in the attic scene of the Haunted Mansion in California. The one in Florida does not have room for him, last time I remember. Oh, also fun thing about Constance Hatchaway, when you're in the attic scene, you can hear see portraits of her husbands and their heads disappear in the portraits, which I really love, that's a cute detail. And my other favorite thing is you hear men going, I do, and then the sound of a shwick and punk, which is basically supposed to be the sound effect of a head being sliced off and the head falling and rolling on the floor. Haunted Mansion can be dark as shit, and I love it. Fun fact, there were arguments back when the back when the original Haunted Mansion was being made, if they should go full on scary or if they should go funny. They did a hybridization, which I like, and currently we are in the, currently the Hatbox Ghost as well as Constant Hatchaway are in the more scary side of the Haunted Mansion. I know they're lore the most. Um, Which I do love the scary side of Haunted Mansion. I really want to get some of this cool sound effects from the Haunted Mansion, but then copyright might be a thing. (sighs) Sad. Siege. So, those are like, two of the more prevalent characters. Now we're going to talk about my personal favorite character from the Haunted Mansion, next to the Hatbox Ghost. Hold on. Oh, while we're do- while I'm looking for an image of her, uh, let me talk about a lovely little character known as uh, Master Gracie. Now, here's the thing about Master Gracie. <sighs> Master Gracie wasn't really a thing. Now, you might remember Master Gracie being mentioned in the Haunted Mansion movie. Good for you. You might have a little bit more than I have. So the Haunted Mansion had a there is a there's a bunch of graves in front of the haunted mansion as well as behind the haunted mansion and the loading and the unloading queue so you know you have yourself entertained while you're in line for about an hour to go on a really good ride in the air conditioning being honest here and there is a gravestone which has a well-beloved master gracie fun fact that's actually named after one of the imagineers there's a lot of references to the imagineers by the way, if you're hearing this sound over and over again, that's me fiddling, using my own personal fidget toy, which is called my cup. Um, there's a lot of references to the Imagineers in the graveyard. And if you go to the one in Florida, there's a cute little interactive thing, which is really fun, Solve where you get to solve a murder. Long story. Um, so, Master Gracie, this is a graveyard. This is a gravestone that is, like, right near the entrance. Well, not right near the entrance of the ride itself. And people... A lot of lore for our Haunted Mansion gets made by the fans and the uh, creators themselves, and they become so prevalent in the zeitgeist that basically it becomes actual canon. Um, One of the other examples, uh, one of the the big examples is the Master Gracie. So Master Gracie was originally just an Easter egg, a reference to, uh, I remember his last name was Gracie, I just cannot remember his first name right now, who was one of the original Imagineers working on the Haunted Mansion. And people assumed, because it said master on the top, that he was the master of the house. That's actually kind of (laughs) wrong. So you have to remember that these homes are basically made in... So the Haunted Mansion in California is basically set around a southern plantation home. (laughs) Uh, It's in New Orleans. And the one in in Florida, Florida and Tokyo, which is basically set set in Liberty Square, is based around, if I remember correctly, Dutch Gothic. Sears gave me the hydrate. One second. <laughs> um, if I remember correctly, its house is Dutch Gothic themed. Yeah, Dutch Gothic. Um, if I remember correctly. Yeah, they actually have different uh, house styles, if you've ever looked at them. Yeah, uh, yeah, Dutch Gothic. I was right! Yay! I got, my, I got my architect right. I love when I get my architect right. <laughs> I do love me some gothic. I wanted to put music in the background, like some creepy organs, but again, copyright. So we're just doing this sans music. Sans. Yeah, man. Anyway. So haunted. So haunted. So uh, where was I? Dutch gothic, Master Gracie. So you have to remember at the time of these uh, manners were supposed to be quote unquote set in. Remember, these buildings are actually built for the attraction. 
I recently found out from a lovely streamer known as Voyalicious or Violicious. I mispronounced her name so many ways. Uh, she actually asked me if the Haunted Mansion itself was actually an actual quote-unquote haunted building that was removed brick by brick and put into the actual Disney park. I went, no, it's built. it was built on site. Um, there's some very interesting fun facts about the OG ha uh, Haunted Mansion, which are hella dark, and we're not going to touch them because we're a happy channel. Actually, no, fuck it, I'm going to tell you. A uh, fun fact, when the original Haunted Mansion opened, it was on the same day that the Manson murders happened. Yeah. Timing! That's about it when it comes to the dark ones. There's another dark one which involves the Phantom Manor, but I'm not going to touch that one because personally I do not like to include shit like that. But yeah. Um, yeah, timing. Uh, so you have to remember that the term master does not mean owner of the house. If you remember correctly, uh, if you've ever watched, uh, fun fact, if you actually ever watched Batman, the original 1960s Batman, you'll get a better idea of how the term master was used. Master was technically used by was a term used by young boys in the household because you would call them something else and butlers would call them call the actual grown man who owned the house something else i think sir or something but it would always be like young master Gra if you ever heard young master grayson it's basically a term used for young men or boys technically before you're an adult so for all we know master gracie is actually a child again this is conspiracy or a theory sorry theory but yeah, but people assume Master Gracie is the owner of the house, and that's where the Haunted Mansion movie plot kicks in, and we're not touching that. Go away. Um, another popular uh, fan theory that became canon was basically involving... Hold on, there's a smudge on my screen that's bothering me. There we go. Involves what is known as Constant Hatchaway's Ring. Um, so to give you context, there used to be an overhead awning in the haunted mansion uh, on and on the path to the haunted mansion overhead haunting and they were removed the overhead haunting and instead of you know drilling instead of you know doing destruction on the concrete and just replace the concrete they just sliced the poles off one of the poles happened to be ring shaped like wedding ring shape round circle little indent where the drill would be hall nine yachts and it basically was in front of constant hatchaway where the window where allegedly constant hatchaway will peek out on you or Madame Leota, depending on the cast member and who and how shitty they want to be. Um, and that ring is supposed to be constant hatchet weight ring. Ring she throws it out of the window. It's not. It was never a thing. But then Disney heard about how people thought about that thing because this is again during peak internet time. And Disney decided as a little Easter egg, they actually did make an actual ring shape and they actually put it in the actual spot where the alleged ring would have been. You know, as a hey, you guys were right thing. It's, uh, I'm not upset about that. That's not a thing that annoys me. It's just like, you know, it's a cute thing that fans basically made canon. Another one is a popular... Another one was, again, like the Constant Hatchaway being a thing with a hat goes, Hey, handsome, who wouldn't want to be with this? Hey, oh. But again, that's still up to interpretation as well as if the ghost host is actually Master Gracie. I personally think the ghost host was a butler or some form of servant. Not actually Master Gracie himself. But that's my personal opinion. Anyway, let's now talk about one of my personal favorite ghosts. In the Haunted Mansion, my personal favorite, who was originally going to be my Halloween costume, and then I decided against it. Do we not have a good image of her? Is this the only good image we have of her? Fine, I reuse it. I'm cranky. Behold! Madame Leota, my personal favorite character, a fortune teller, and, um, <clears throat> won't be using that term, it starts with a G. Um, one of my favorite characters, a fortune teller, who basically, her whole purpose is to summon the spirits from somewhere beyond. I love this character, I've, she's like the iconic character of the Haunted Mansion, she's the ghost, minus, she's the most popular ghost, and basically she's a giant floating head. Hey, look, references! <laughs> uh, fun fact, fun fun fact. Madame Leota is voiced by the same voice actress who did Maleficent and Lady Tremaine. Uh, the stepmother in, uh, in, in uh, uh, Cinderella, for those who do not know. And then, um, she is, she's predominant in the, sh she's predominant. There's also a little Leota, which is telling you to hurry back, hurry back, don't forget your death certificates. There's always been argument about if that's the same Leota. If not, like, the bride. Anyway. So that's... That, that's the Haunted Mansion. Uh, so that's her. 
Hello, Madam Leota. You're my fave. Can, can you see the references, people? Can you see the references? Uh, any questions so far before we go into Phantom, the Phantom Manor? Because when we go to Phantom Manor, we're going in Phantom Manor hard. Because Phantom Manor has the most amount of lore. I shit you not. It has the... Whoop. Mystic Manor also has the most ton of lore, but it's more like it has a lot of lore that is con it has lore that is connected to a big conspiracy. But more on that later. So again, Madame Leota, fun fact, is in every haunted mansion except Mystic Manor. Why I will explain later. Uh, but she is the most prevalent character in all of Haunted Mansion. And fun fact, Candy, if you happen to still be in the chat right now, you better be perking your damn ears up. Sea pigs have ears, right? There is a theory that is going around that Madame Leota is the connection to all the Haunted Mansions. You were going to call her an SW, not a G. Yeah! No, no, no. If Madame Le... Well, there is a rumor that Madame Leota may have used some sedu seductions on the ghost host and other things. Sex worker. <laughs> um, there you go, Sir Meyer. There might have been some things. Again, it's conjecture. Again, it also involves the comics and the books, which I have not read. And fun fact, are meant for children. I mean, that's not a bad fun fact, but you know, they're for children, so I'd have to go into the children's section, and sadly, my local library does not have them. Um, also, apparently, getting these books and comics is kind of hella hard, because there was only limited printing. Uh, where was I? Oh, yeah. Uh, Madame Leota is connected to all the Haunted Mansions. She's in all but Mystic Manor, and some people like to theorize that she is the reason why these Haunted Mansions actually exist, which I think might be a reference to one of the comics. Also, a fun, fun fact, when Guillermo del Toro was working on the Haunted Mansion movie, was working on it, is not working on it anymore, worked on Pinocchio instead, which is pretty good, but didn't work on the Haunted Mansion movie, Guillermo del Toro would have been perfect for the Haunted Mansion movie. All I'm saying! She could have done crazy and kooky at the same time and it would have been a wonderful balance. Breathe. 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 Anyway, when Guillermo del Toro was working on his Haunted Mansion script, he did originally consider doing a whole thing where all the Haunted Mansions are connected via Madame Leota. So, yes, there technically is a Haunted Mansion multiverse, but it's not a multiverse because it's in the same verse. They're all connected to Leota in some form or fashion, except for Mystic Manor, which we will cover later. Oh, that's message me. Thank you. <laughs> yes, cr crazy and kooky, mysterious and spooky. They're all together ooky. The Adams Family. Me. Da -da -da -da. Anyway, and she was going to be like the main connection and like a very major important plot hole. Now, I have nothing against Jennifer Tilly and her Madame Leota. I actually kind of enjoyed it because I do like camp and and Jennifer Tilly is camp, and I do enjoy some good camp nowadays. I am a fan of the Chucky movies, for the love of God. Um, but, and I know that in the new movie, uh, Jamie Lee Curtis, a.k.a. the sc original Scream Queen herself, will be playing Madame Leota. I'm on the fence about this. I'm on the fence about the whole Haunted Mansion movie once I found out Guillermo del Toro is not working on it anymore. And I was like, Ugh. And then I found out Jared Leto is also going to be in it playing the Hatboss Ghost. Ugh. I'm not a fan of Jared Leto. He's a horrible person, in my opinion. Anyway, so let us, uh, now that we have gone and enjoyed America, as well as Tokyo, <laughs> Haunted Mansion, are you guys ready to learn about Le Phantom, de Man Le Phantom Manor? Is everyone excited to learn about France? France. Again, I'd like to point out that I am skimming a lot of the history and lore of the Haunted Mansion. Uh, there is Gamepedia. We have French people in our my chat. I have French fans. Zephron Art, hello. Um, I would like to also point out I am doing a very good skim over of this whole thing because I couldn't go into massive detail because then my head implodes. Um, <laughs> I knew it. I knew Zephron was going to say something. So here's the thing. If you really, really want some really good deep dive lore into Haunted Mansion, I suggest Offhand Disney, who is on uh, YouTube. He's very good at his shit. He did once, one, one October, he did 31 Days of Haunted Mansion, which is nothing but 31 videos about Haunted Mansion shit and lore. And I learned some shit from that thing, too. So, <laughs> um, so, and his whole shtick is the Haunted Mansion, so he's a lot better at this. So, if you want to have, um, 
Hey, hey, hey. X nay on the all it takes pay gamepedia. Oh wait, you're talking about the French complaining about the politics, not the actual French politics. Okay, well done. Tiny knife put away. Leota, stop staring at me. <laughs> Go away. Anyway, so the French, uh, the French. So here's the thing about the hunt. Yeah. So if, again, if you want to see some really good deep lore shit. Uh, offhand Disney, I highly recommend him. Uh, by the way, when this becomes a VOD on YouTube, I will link to his channel. But now, we get to the fun shit, in my personal opinion. Because I love the Haunted Mansion. But, there is a, but the one in France, in, pa to in Euro Disney, or Par Disneyland Paris, I don't know what you call it now, you keep changing the name, is one I would strive and willing to go to. Hell, I will admit this now. I will never admit this to my French teacher. I took French so I could go to Euro Disneyland and be able to enjoy the Haunted Mansion ride and all the other rides because they used to only be in French. They're now in English, but they used to only be in French. I took French so I could go enjoy Euro Disneyland. I will admit this here, and thank God my French teacher from high school does not watch my streams. That would be hella weird. So I'm willing to admit this. So the, fan so the Phantom Manor, because we are in Europe, <laughs> you get to be a little bit more lax. You are you can do some more creepy horror shit, apparently, in Europe than you can in America. Thinking about all the pearl clutching that happens whenever something happens. Yeah. They have a point. They were able to go darker. Now, unlike uh, uh, the American ones, which were set in... Uh, which are set in New Orleans Square and Liberty Square. In France, it got set in what is basically Frontierland, uh, Thunder Mesa. I think it's called in uh, Phantom, Man Phantom Manor. Uh, Euro Disneyland. Disneyland Paris. <laughs> I've got yeah, the problem is I have to make the monies. I do not have enough money to go and fly to Paris, also get a passport, and fly to Paris and then go to Euro Disneyland. Although I have heard that the prices in freaking Tokyo Disney are a lot cheaper than they are in America, which hurts me in many places when doing conversions. So, ooh, my ear's ringing. So, um, bop, 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 bop. So, they decided to set this one in uh, Frontierland, also known as Thunder Mesa. Just call it Mena Haunt it. Easy. No, uh, fun fact. Uh, they decided to call the Haunted Mansion in uh, Euro Disneyland Phantom Manor because, and it's actually a very good reason, Haunted Man they wanted to have a name that could be easily recognizable both English and French. Haunted Mansion doesn't really translate well into French. It turns into Mena Haunt. Mena Haunt Haunt My French is rusty. And, you know, and then when you try to translate that back into English, it doesn't really work, according to the Disney people. And so that's why Haunted Mansion in France is called Phantom Manor, which, fun fact, was inspired by two really, really classic novels, uh, Phantom de Opera, as well as The Great Expectations. You'll, you'll see why on Great Expectations, because it doesn't make, it didn't make sense to me until I actually did a read, a read up on a summary of The Great Expectations. I think it's Great Expectations. I've been told it's Great Expectations. I might be wrong. So that's why it is called Phantom Manor. It works for it works both in French and English. So no weird translation issues when ha making the signage. They were saving money on signage. Let's be honest here. Um, so Phantom Manor is very interesting because it's also very hyper uh, integrated into Thunder Mesa or Frontierland. Thunder Mesa, which is basically Euro Disney's Frontierland. And uh, so here's a really interesting thing: the other haunted mansions in America don't really integrate into the lore of the land that they are in. Phantom Manor does. And it's really good, in my opinion. It is really, really good. I want to go on the ride. It is freaking voiced by... Vi the whole narration is done by Vincent Price. Okay? Vincent Price. Man, I love some Vincent Price. And it was voiced originally by Vincent Price. And then they removed it because the French complained that it was in English because the French are the French. But then they changed it back to the original Vincent Price recordings. They, you know, cleaned it up to make it better quality. But still, Vincent fucking Pr All hail Vincent Price. And I actually do have the original... I do have the Vincent Price audio on my computer. I have the whole... I have a lot of Haunted Mansion audio that I wish I could incorp incorp incorporate into my stream. But I can't. Because... 
Copyright. Oh. So, Vincent Price, huh? So the Fanta so the whole story about Thunder Mesa is very interesting. So Thunder Mesa is a mining town. Now, how did it become a mining town, you might be asking. No one's asking this, I'm making it ask it. <laughs> yeah, they removed it. Yeah, I think the reason why was the French were complaining. Because uh, Euro Disneyland is very popular with the French populace, and a lot of people in other European countries go to the one in Florida. Fun fact, Florida's pop... Fun fact, uh, Anaheim is more... The Anaheim one in California is more popular amongst the locals, while the one in Florida is more popular for tourists. And I have the misfortune to have to deal with them every other day. Well, not anymore. I don't leave my house. But I used to have the misfortune of dealing with them. No, I did not work for Disney, and I do not speak for the brand and the company. Holy... Uh, so Euro Disneyland was very... Disneyland Paris. I'm sorry I keep calling it Euro Disneyland, but because I'm an old person who remembered it being called that, I know they did the name change a while back, but... So, Thunder Mesa is a mining town, like I said. Now, you might be wondering, how did it become a mining town? I don't know why I've given you all this weird voice, but you all now have this weird voice. Thank you. You're welcome. So, and here's the other thing about Phantom Manor that I really love. One, it has a rich story within it. Unlike the other Haunted Mansions, which basically you have a bunch of ghosts with story and lore, and you know, you have to interpret it from the scenes. I mean, you still have to interpret it from the scenes, but you've got a story in the ride, and it's really, really, really good, and it's a very important part of Thunder Mesa itself. You know when I said there was park lore? Yeah, we're in park lore country now. So Thunder Ma because the thing that Disney loves doing, Disney in general, loves to have parks with themes, and they like to put stories within the lore, so people who go to Disney often can see some extra new things and learn some new shit, and it's really good for those people who, you know... Uh, it's good for those people who are, you know, autistic and hyper-focused and have hyper-fixations and really, really like teeny tiny details like that. Disney does love their tiny details, and I love it. Um, so Phantom Manor, like I said. Hold on. Grabbing the notes. Phantom Manor! Star is owned by a man known as Henry Ravenswood, who was born in 1795. I don't know if that's important, but it's important in according to my notes. Uh, was a western settler who struck gold in Big Thunder Mountain. Which, if you happen to know what Big Thunder Mountain is, yes, they do have a Thunder Mountain Railroad at, di at Thunder Mesa. So. At th oh, sorry. They found the Big Thunder Mountain, which basically founded the, th the Big Thunder Mountain Mining Company, thus creating the city of Thunder Mesa, which is where Frontier Land is. It's called Thunder Mesa. And, in the, and basically, Ravenswood himself became hella rich. I mean, you struck gold. You become hella rich. So he decides to basically build himself a Victorian manor, which a lot of people like to joke saying it kind of looks like the Psycho House. It's not. <laughs> it just happens to be that the Psycho House and this manor happen to both be of the Victorian style, so therefore they look very similar. They are not the same. It is not an inspiration. Please stop thinking it's a fucking inspiration. <laughs> it's a common mistake. Um... And base lit on this place known as Boot Hill, overlooking the Big Thunder Mountain, where he raised his family, his wife Martha, and his daughter, Melaine Ravenswood. She is going to be a very important part of the story, so remember and take notes. Sorry, uh, Melaine. Melaney? 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 John Melaney? Anyway. Melaine. Mel. We'll call her Mel. Who <laughs> was born in 1842. Uh, basically, um... <laughs> okay, so, uh, warning... This is the part of the lore that's going to get problematic, and I'm not personally a big, the biggest fan of it. Because, one, it doesn't really mean anything in the Haunted Man in the Phantom Manor itself, in my personal opinion. And, two, this was made, this park came out in 1992. This ride came... the di, Euro di, uh, Disneyland Paris came out in 1992. Most likely, the writing for Thunder Mesa was made in 1980. I'm putting up warnings right now if you haven't figured out the problem. And most likely, the things that they used at this current time was written in the 1980s, because I'm assuming because of how early 90s this was. Red flags, red flags. Um, that basically they were using stuff that was marketable and did not consider, you know, the people who might be involved in this. So the, um, <clears throat> we're just going to call them the locals. The locals of the area, not the settlers, the locals. Ryer, if you're listening, you might get the idea of what I'm going for here. And I am very sorry, Sir Vire, the white guilt is kicking in. The locals were selling them to not dig further into Thunder Mountain because the Thunderbird lived there. <sighs> I am not a big fan of this part of the lore myself, and personally, it doesn't really account to anything. Yeah, yeah, Vire, I know, I know, 
I know, I know. I personally think they can just ease, and I personally believe, in my personal belief, they can cut the Thunderbird bit out because it doesn't really affect anything story-wise if you remove it completely. It's like removing a lamp from a scene no one's going to notice. It's not, it's okay, it's okay. It's not okay, but you're fine. Okay. And apparently, allegedly, do not wake up the Thunderbird. He did, but that's not important. Let's ignore that and skip that all over it. I just want to point out that this was a thing that is, and I think it's still canon, maybe, possibly. I don't know. I've never been to Paris. I'd love to go to Paris. I'd like to eat some food. Um, So, it's a thing. It's a powerful spirit. Wrath will fall upon anyone who disturbs the mountain. An earthquake did happen. So, you know, they weren't wrong, but the earthquake will happen later. Anyway, more importantly, the settlers, the people, Malayne was getting older and becoming of that age where we get married, we get interested in boys and get married. And she had multiple suitors at different times, not all at once. Although that would be very interesting if they did include a polycule. <laughs> no. Mandatory arise, chicken, chicken arise. <laughs> Fire said it, it's fine. No, um. Anyway, the Thunderbird thing is not really important. Forget the Thunderbird. I don't even know why I included it. Because it's in your notes and you had to put in Thunderbird, all by the way, do mass apology. Yeah, that's why. Um, so, Malayne was becoming of that age where she was interested in boys and going out with boys. And it was really cute. The problem is, her, boys kept, her boy toys kept mis mysteriously disappearing. Um, they kept disappearing. They went missing. Uh... So, four men courted her, and three of them kind of went, ah. they went missing <coughs> for later. They've gone missing or found dead. Um, Malayne basically met a fourth suitor, a wonderful uh, railroad, is it a railroad captain? I think he's a railroad conductor, train engineer, close enough. Malayne thought she was doomed to be forever alone, like yours truly, but she found a, a train engineer. And he was basically, she was head over heels. She was massively in love with him. And it's so sweet. They were so in love. And he even promised her, when we get married, we can leave Thunder Mesa. Okay. So, day of the wedding. So, they were getting married. The day of the wedding happened. And allegedly, a phantom figure came to him, to the train engineer. And basically, the train engineer went missing again. Went missing. Disappeared. She found out. She was upset. Her father told her he ran away. He got cold feet and just ran away and didn't want to marry her. She didn't believe him. She knew that he was loyal and would have stayed with her to the end. And basically, this is where the great expectations comes in, by the way, if you haven't figured it out yet. <laughs> um, she basically waited for him. She still had the wedding set up and she was just waiting for him, walking around the helm with melancholy, singing melancholy songs, just waiting for her train engineer, her bow, to come back. Who I think he actually does have a name, which is, um, hold on. Jake Foreman. Really? They call him Jake the Foreman? So, um, also in this attack, because, and also during this, when this happened, a massive earthquake happened when he, when, uh, everything happened, right? Massive earthquake completely covered the building in rubble, covered all of Thunder Mesa in rubble as well, I think. Um, wait, hold on. Timeline fucked up. Um, oh, no, no, I'm sorry. She basically is still... Uh, a giant earthquake happened, which is allegedly the Thunderbird's Wrath. Again, I don't want I don't believe that. I just think it was an earthquake. Um, and basically, the whole town got covered in rubble. Ta um, gets re uncovered in rubble, and that's the Thunder Mesa that you guys find. Anyway, so here's a fun factoid. <laughs> you might be wondering, why the Phantom come in? You only mentioned the Phantom once. So here's the thing. Apparently, Harry Ravenswood, uh, apparently her daddy, you know, the owner of the manor, didn't like her going out with, didn't like her going out with boys and potentially leaving Thunder Mesa. So what he did would basically go after her bows and make them disappear and die dad of the year right here folks <laughs> he admits his responsibility to base on the right he admits he is the one responsible for killing all her, her bows and in the process of her in the while the last one the fourth one jake the engineer basically or john whatever engineer when she basically was still waiting for him apparently her father 
taunted her, basically saying, give up. He's never going to be a thing. He's never going to come back. Again, dad of the year right here, right up there with freaking Endeavor and the guy who turned his da her daughter into a dog monster in full metal. Dad of the year. Also, Shinji getting the robot dad. Right up there. <sighs> dad of the year material right here. And basically, apparently, also when he died, he asked his ghost friends to haunt her ass still to make her go mad. Everyone here with me so far? Because I haven't seen any reactions. I'm expecting some form of reaction to Dad of the Year, please. Oh! Um. <clears throat> and basically, she went mad. Allegedly, she went mad. She also died and also haunts the manor and basically is singing still, waiting for Jake the Engineer. Yeah, dead dad of the year. And the Phantom, her dad, still haunts her to this day and basically taunts her that you will never see your husband again. Because they don't even get to see the husband. She doesn't even get to see her husband in the afterlife. That's how fucked up this is. Because, you know, you would think, oh, she died. Happy ending. She gets to go see her lovers in the, pa in, in the afterlife. Now. Nope. They don't get to see each other again. They never get to see each other again. She is forlorn because she still thinks... I think, if I remember... If I'm assuming... This is Assumption Cat right now. She still in, thinks that she's alive for all we know. And she doesn't know she's passed on. And that's why she hasn't passed on fully to go see her dead husbands. The boyfriends. Could be John Lister Shout Tucker. Yeah, good point. So, that happens. Which is great. It's great. Phantom Manor is really great. <laughs> Full of good, wonderful parents... Ugh, Phantom Man. I, I just really don't understand why her dad would... This is, again, me telling everyone, like, my opinions on the story. I love this story. Fun fact, the uh, Phantom Manor haunted... Man, the Phantom Manor has actual skeletons in the ride. Well, not actual, actual skeletons. They have skeletons in the ride, but they're not actually made of bone. Um, they're fake, of course. Uh, I've gotten a dab from Piss Green Link. Hello, Piss Green Link. So that is a thing that happens. Ah, sorry, sorry, I'm scratching my eye. My eye itches. And I legitimately do not understand why her dad would not want her to get married. Because if she gets married to rich people... Oh, wait. Now I remember why. So, um, here's the thing I forgot to include into the story because I forgot about it and it just popped into my brain. Well, me going, why doesn't she like... Why doesn't he like any of her bows? All her bow... So she, in Thunder... Spooky, spooky skeletons. Thank you. So... Her dad spoiled her rotten and gave her a life of luxury. I just remember this. Sorry. I had a moment of remembering shit. Her dad spoiled her rotten. Well, not rotten, but, like, tried to give her the best life ever. And she lived a life of fanciness. And you, you, we all know the story of rich girl falls in love with common boy. Rich parents don't like it. Basically that. She kept falling in love with commoners, the settlers, in Big Thunder, in Thunder Mesa. And I guess he didn't like it that she was with a commoner uh punk bog yes and no they used to there's only one actual bone left in Han and, in pirates of the caribbean i think they might have replaced it by now there was only there used to be real bones in it now it's all fake bones and the one that only has the real bone and the ones that had the real bones in it was the original pirates of the caribbean in lovely little california which, uh, in California, which apparently those got replaced. And I think there might be just, like, one actual bone left. And it's a skull, maybe. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, Ravensworth is an ass. Henry Ravensworth, who is technically, who is also your ghost host in the ride. He's the one who guides you through the whole ride. And at the end, you get to see this cool, wonderful skeleton Victorian man, and it looks awesome at the end. That's all Vincent Price, baby. I love Vincent Price. He's a good character. Whew. Whoa! How far have we gone? Oh, barely an hour. Okay. Sorry, folks. I needed to hydrate. Ow! That hurt my hand. Eleven. It's always spying for your racist family. Hello, Twisted Clown. You've just missed the Phantom Manor, the most fucked up of the Haunted Mansion rides. Pets doesn't work, Vire. I forgot to turn that off. Refund yourself. Uh, so, 
that's the haunted that is phantom manor i personally loved would love to go see phantom manor because it has such a dark gothic storyline because it was inspired by a lot of gothic novels as well as phantom of the opera and great expectations if you haven't figured out the great expectations reference there's a whole scene in the great expectations where the where a woman is basically still dressed up as a bride when she got snubbed on her wedding so many decades ago and she's still you know dresses at it waiting for her husband to be where all the food is rotten and everything is dusty and the dress technically doesn't fit her anymore etc etc so that's the reference in great expectations in phantom manor phantom manor is really good in my personal opinion i'd love to be able to go on that ride one day if all else fails i'll just stick to the virtual ones that are available on youtube uh, curious of being disabled and poor um so now we get to go to one of the more actually Let's take a small break. You want to take a small break? We're going to take a small break. Bio break. I have to pee. I drank a lot of water. Um, so be right back, everyone. Uh, Willie will be right back after these messages. So, where was I? The Pits of Despair. Wait, wrong movie. Wrong franchise. No, technically say under the same ownership now because Princess Bride is now technically... Wait, was Princess Bride Fox? Eh, who cares? Anyway, hey, Abs. Anyway, so where was I? Ah, uh, yeah. Okay, so we have talked about Haunted Mansion in both Tokyo, Disney, uh, Tokyo, uh, Florida, and Anaheim. That's California. Um, I have talked about Le Phantom Manor. And now, uh, we get to the fun one. <laughs> this one's gonna hurt me. So, the last one is in Hong Kong. I think it's Hong Kong. It's either Hong Kong or Shanghai. Uh, hold on, I'm just checking my notes because I wrote notes and I broke them. I broke my notes, people! <coughs> yes, I am right. So... I had to check my notes again because I'm a dumbass. So we're now going to talk about Mr. Manor, which is in Hong Kong Disney. Now, you might all be wondering, why does Cat make groaning sounds when she talks about Mystic Manor? Now, I personally love Mystic Manor. I think it's cute. So here's some background info about Mystic Manor. So they wanted to try to, in, in Hong Kong Disney, they wanted to try to do either new versions of existing rides or completely new IPs. Don't mention Taiwan. We're talking about Hong Kong Disney. Uh, so, see, in Hong Kong, they uh, so they wanted to do new rides, and they wanted to do either, like, revamped versions of ro original rides or just do completely new ones. And they wanted to do, uh, like, new ones that would reference, like, rides that are in America. Reasoning, I do not know. But one of the rides they wanted to do was Haunted Mansion. But see, there's a small, teeny, tiny problem with the Haunted Mansion. Small, teeny, teeny, tiny. In Hong Kong and in other places in Asia, spirits are revered and respected, not feared. So it would be very culturally insensitive <laughs> to do an actual Haunted Mansion ride. It would be basically like the equivalency of having suddenly at Epcot a ride about Noah's Ark. About Noah's Ark. Or the journey of Moses. Okay, that's Bible, the ride. That's how culturally insensitive it might be seen as. Okay? Give you an idea. So they decided instead of doing haunting spirits of haunting, cursed, haunted, cursed, or, you know, spooky spirits of humans, they decided to go for haunted objects. No human spirits are connected to it, and it's possibly a curse. A funny curse, a happy curse, fun, fun curse. So Mystic Manor is basically owned by, oh god, I gotta get the notes out for this fucking shit because this note, this is where the freaking rabbit hole begins. You think I'm joking? No, this is where the rabbit hole begins. Oh, you thought the Phantom Manor was the rabbit hole? You thought the Madame Leota thing was the rabbit hole? No. Hang on, hang on. So, uh, other fun facts about, um... Other fun facts about lovely, lovely, lovely haunted objects, like possessed. Sounds interesting. Yes, it is. So Mystic Manor, a uh, fun, 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 fun fact, um, is actually one of the first trackless rides of Disney. Uh, a trackless ride is basically a ride with no bar, no pole, no nothing. It's all done via magnetism. 
If I remember correctly, off of the top of my dome, and if I'm wrong, I'm gonna be corrected. Ah, uh, baby, ba. Uh, da, 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 da. Mystic Manor is where I'm a lot more rusty at, because, I will admit to this, because um, I, one, have never been to Hong Kong, and two, it's more of one of the newer versions of the of a Haunted Mansion ride, so therefore there's not a lot of information on it. Anyway, so... Oop, ah, uh, that's important. So, the Mystic Manor was, um, again, they decided to do classic original rides instead of recreating the ones in the West, you know, for funsies, and they wanted to do Haunted Mansion stuff. And they can't do Haunted Mansion stuff because, you know, they revere spirits and all that shit. Um, so they decided to do instead a cute little, cute little fun ride. So this is Albert. Wait, you're not Albert. Your name is Miss. <coughs> Your name is Belch. Um, and also this ride um, has is the first trackless ride, which basically means there's no track whatsoever. It's all done by magnetism and computers, I think. Hold on, I'm checking. Does not say. But basically, it's a trackless ride. Uh, think the Winnie the Pooh ride in, Flo in Florida, as well as, I think, California, maybe. And uh, think of the uh, the Ratatouille ride that soon will be in, Fra in France and Epcot, as well as it currently in uh, Disneyland Paris. Yay! I can remember things. Sorry, my brain's mush. Put more sugar in my brain. I need more sugar. One second. I've only had one cup of tea today. So I got caffeinate with compicchio. It's sugar cooked with sugar. <laughs> so Henry, what they also did with Mystic Manor, instead of going for the spooky, dark, and macabre, they went for cartoony and funny and more campy, and I love it. It's so cute. Originally, they were going to do, like, screens, but then they decided, no, we're going to do all animatronics and, sp and practical effects, which is awesome! So, you might be wondering who this old fucker is beside me. Hi, old fucker. <laughs> um, this is Henry Mystic, the owner of Mystic Manor. And that's his, his, that's his pet monk. Uh, sorry, sorry, he's not Henry Mystic. He is Lord Henry Mystic, the founder of the Society of Explorers and Adventurers, AKC. I'm going to cover that later. Um, and that's his pet monkey, Albert, who's named after his grandpa, I think. Anyway, uh, this basically, they found this, they found this lovely little man, they found this wonderful place in Papua New Guinea. Again, I will cover the Society of Explorers and Adventurers later. Uh, they discovered this little place in Papua New Guinea, they built a manor there, and basically he collects and shares, he basically turned his home into a museum with all the treasures that he had found during his massive adventures, Right? This makes him sound like a villain, I'm fully aware, but hold on with me. We'll cover some of the shit in Disney Sea. Um, and he was ba his, basically, the ride is basically him showcasing the stuff he has found on his many great adventures. Which is cute! And like, he start and then on the ride itself, you start off with him being like, Hello, welcome, how are you, blah blah blah, showing off some things. And then he goes, this is a magic music box, which apparently brings life to objects. <laughs> his pet monkey, Albert, decides to play with it. <laughs> Why is a white dude at a... Because he's an explorer, and the technically the place where the park is red is set in is, like, Adventureland, and it's around Papua New Guinea, I think. He's supposed to be, like, the stereotypical classic English explorer, big mustache, fa 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 And shish. Don't interrupt. Shish, pug, pug. Um, so he's basically showcasing his stuff. Uh, he had to go off to do something. Albert decided to play with the freaking magic... Ma they decided to play with a stupid magic box. Never play with a stupid magic box, Albert. Which basically at, turned all the objects into life. And the ride is so cute and funny, in my opinion. Because it's just like, it's funny and it's hilarious. British. Uh, which includes many things. include And also has a bunch of things that are references to the Haunted Mansion without directly being a reference to the Haunted Mansion. One of them being that instead of having singing busts, they have singing knights in armor. Nice enough. And also they have a lovely... It is a mosaic. Offhand Disney called it a fresco, and I got mad at him. <laughs> Not legitimately mad, but, you know, got annoyed. Because it is a... Uh, so, in the Haunted Mansion, there are changing portraits, which I forgot to mention because I didn't think they were important to the lore, but now I regret that. Portraits that basically would change with the bright flash of lightning 
or on other rides, which just change the way you move. You know, you move your hand this way, it looks this way, you move your hand that way, it looks that way. One of those, those, those classic uh, magic eye puzzles. And when he, um, and one of them is a very popular one of a Greek woman who gets turned into, who turns into Medusa. I like it. I'm a mythology nerd. I approve. And so in Mystic Manor, there is actually a mosaic of a woman turning into a Medusa. It has a wonderful 3D effect. It looks awesome. Ugh. I mean, it looks awesome watching video of it. I want to see, see it in person, see how cool it looks. Um, there's also a reference to the, to, and then in the great words of offhand Disney, a jade monkey statue thing. It's most like, and, and I was laughing again because he definitely does not read Journey to the West. It is definitely a reference to Sun Wukong. The, if you, if you know Journey to the West, you know Sun Wukong. He's awesome. Um, but like, there's a lot of mythology references in there, so that makes me giggy. Uh, there is a funny little picture that ba is a painting of a group at Pompeii and the volcano erupts and they get doused in lava, but they still clink their glass. It's funny, but dark humor. <laughs> My bread and butter. Ah, yes, you are aware of Dragon Ball Goku. <laughs> Wink wonk. And again, it's a very humorous, very funny, um very humorous, very funny ride using practical effects. There is some references to some Norse thing with some cold blowing wind. There might be a reference to the hitchhiking ghosts in there, but I don't think so. It's just a mirror that happens to crack. It's not that deep, bruh. And it's a cute ride, and it's very funny. <sighs> and I love, I like Mystic Banner. I would love to also go to Mystic Banner. Now, there's something else I want to point out, and give me a second, because I have to stop the record, because, uh, fun fact, I am recording this at the same time, and I'm going to make this into two separate videos, because we're about to go into the deep shit. Are y'all excited to get into the deep shit, which involves Mystic Manor? Y'all ready for this? 